And we're off to Japan for two weeks. We have a layover in Brisbane to Japan, but it's only for an hour. It's funny because we're Asian and every time we catch an international flight, we're going to be at the airport like six hours in advance. But we're literally just flying from Melbourne to Brisbane. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this, but I have a really rough time on planes. So you really need to just knock me the hell out because I'm going to be sick the whole time. This trip wasn't too bad, but I was asleep. When we finally arrived in Tokyo though, it was freezing. I'm coming from Melbourne, which was like 30 degrees, and then Tokyo was like five. Anyway, look at all the convenience stores. It's literally our first visit. Uh, love the train systems in Japan. Hate the stairs. Tokyo is notorious for having a lot of stairs. So, you know, if you're planning to carry a lot of luggage, just be mindful of that. The hotel is right in Shinjuku. It was kind of small, but the location was fantastic. Most places are kind of small. I don't know why I'm complaining about it because all hotel rooms are really small in Tokyo. So keen to just unpack and grab a light dinner. Obviously checked out another convenience store. Everything was still open, which I'm surprised by because the last time I was in Japan, most things were closed. Girl, I am tired. I just want to eat and then grab a really good night's sleep. I'm exhausted. Finally grabbed some ramen. It was pretty good. The egg was a little bit overdone, but it is what it is. I'm finally in Japan. Ah! I'm getting ready. It is now 30. I normally don't wake up this early, but like it's a holiday. I'm so excited. So our first stop is in Tokyo. My partner's gone off to do like a work meeting on a holiday, but that's okay. My stomach just like grumbled. I'm gonna get ready and then I'm gonna take you with me. Our first day, I planned for us to go and make some custom fragrance, which I'm really excited about. I don't know if you know this, but scent is so intricately linked to memory. And I really wanna have a really strong memory of my first trip here. It's my first trip here with my partner. Plus it's been like seven or eight years since I've been back in Japan. so things still feel so new to me. I feel like if I made this custom send, every time I smell it, I'll always remember this trip. So that's first on our agenda. I also need to go pick up little bits and pieces. I gotta show you, like, this is pretty much all the makeup I bought and like makeup brushes. We're gonna go vintage shopping, but I also wanna check out like, GU and Uniqlo as well. So I'm gonna take you there. There's a lot of shopping in the next couple of days. The thing I'm looking forward to the most is just eating. I'm so excited about eating sashimi. I will eat my weight in seafood, like I'm telling you. I'm just gonna quickly finish up my makeup. I am so excited, y'all, like, I'm in Japan. And my hotel, look, it's really small, but like this is my first time in a Japanese hotel. All hotel rooms and Airbnbs have been really small. This is, this is actually the average size. The last Airbnb I was at was also quite small. But on top of that, I haven't like gone on a holiday since like even before COVID. So you know your girl is excited. Like I really want to respect his privacy. I think he's actually okay with appearing on camera. Just to start off with, I think, you know, I mean like, to be honest, like who's even watching my videos at this point? Like, I think it's okay. Um, I just want to make sure he feels comfortable. I plan to take so many photos as well. Hello, it's your boyfriend. Hello, it's your boyfriend. <laughs> Hi, baby. I actually ended up relying on my Google Maps and Google Translate so much during this trip. Google, please, please sponsor me. But my partner was telling me how on Google Maps, they'd actually tell you which carriage to get on for the quickest exit. Like, come on, that's crazy. In Melbourne, you sort of just pray your train decides to come, like forget about coming on time. It's kind of nostalgic being back in Tokyo, but at the same time, it feels like a whole new experience. Oh my god, crates! Should we get crates? I've been done with donkey. Oh, uh, donkey crate, hey, hey. Donkey, you know? Donkey, I want crepes. This particular cafe is so cute. It was essentially like a little art museum. I think the person who owns it collects art, or curates art. Anyway, there was a very random bathroom <laughs> statue, which I thought was so freaking oh dope. God, Everyone is so, so dripped out here, like, and That's super stylish. 
it's just everything was so picturesque. I love Shinjuku. Anyway, we eventually did find Anne's fragrance. It's a little bit hidden. There were like no signs, but the experience was really, really cool. It was just so much fun designing this perfume. You got to choose the primary notes and like supporting notes. Put all your picks on a card and then eventually someone comes and helps you. You can actually also customize the entire bottle, which I thought was really cool. So you get assigned a staff member and they actually help you make it. I know this is not the first of its kind in Japan, but I haven't actually been to the other perfumery. All I know is this particular experience was a lot of fun and the staff member was super nice. I mean, overall, Japanese people are very nice and very polite, but it was just a very cool experience to share with my partner. It was like our first couple activity and we customized our bottles together. I ended up choosing a purple color for my fragrance and just some gold accessories. And it was just really cool. Like we got to just enjoy the experience. She did everything and she was super nice and made conversations with us. We got to watch her mix the perfume. Everything was just really cool. It felt like a lab or like an apothecary type of lab. Um, and there were just different versions of this perfume that she got you to smell and decide which one you liked. I eventually chose one that wasn't too powdery or too sweet. I really ended up liking the scent that I went with. And my partner chose one that's a little bit more woody. I ended up going with like a lilac color. It was really cute. And then my partner ended up going with like a pistachio color. Actually, I don't even know why I said pistachio. It's green. It's literally green. Anyway, the whole experience was so cute. Australia. Australia. Yeah. Australia. Yeah. 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 They even let you name your perfume. Um, and they gave you like a little booklet with a with the formula for the perfume like everything is just so curated and beautiful it's, it's just so cool oh my god it's been so much fun i highly recommend the experience i thought it was so cool i have a couple of days where i'll schedule to just go off on little side quests by myself my partner's going to meet up with his table tennis friends and he used to live here so he's gonna go catch up with them catch up with them at another time go grab dinner but i'm just gonna go shopping by myself i think there's two days where i'm scheduled to just get lost because if there's anywhere to get lost it's in japan you know it's so crazy because like i feel so happy i haven't been on a holiday in so long that i'm just I'm crying like I'm so happy also do you guys like my bangs I sort of cut them by myself and you you can sort of tell I cut them by myself but I think she's in her bang era everyone dresses so insanely well here like, even the average office person their drip is like stone cold I'm so excited plus you guys like my nails I literally got it done before Japan anyway I'm gonna go do some shopping today I ended up walking around a little bit more and came across another cafe this one reminds me of like a Melbourne Fitzroy cafe. It was really cute. It had all these really adorable cakes and like literally look at this hummus. It looks like ice cream, but it was hummus. Like I don't even know how that worked. It's really cool. It's just very aesthetic. I love the silver trays. After that, we sort of made our way through the luxury high-end shopping district. Um, I didn't end up going to the Ralph Lauren cafe. It's just so crazy busy. But everything was beautiful. Everything was so picturesque. This was a bit random. We ended up going to this restaurant. I'm so sorry. I don't even remember which restaurant it was. It was pretty good, but I mean, I wouldn't write home about it. It was just a good warm lunch because it was freezing. Ended up getting some desserts afterwards as well but I feel like I didn't eat as desserts or as many desserts on this trip as I probably should have. Ended up finding Cosmere. Oh my freaking god, it was an experience. 
So they had this whole section where like all these products won the Cosmere Award. And when I tell you, I went completely broke here. I spent so much money. Ended it the night with a bowl of ramen. Honestly, this one was kind of okay. We eventually did move to our new hotel. I didn't take any footage of it because I was exhausted by now, but I wanted to show you my station. Like how cute is this station? It was so beautiful. Anyway, the next day. My hair is looking real crazy today, but I don't know. I don't hate it. It's just a little bit frizzy. We woke up a little bit late today and now it's midday and we haven't had breakfast and I haven't had coffee. Heaps of like little vintage stores as well. Not little, they're actually big chains, I think. And I think Second Life is also just around the corner. So we're gonna go grab some breakfast, grab some coffee, do a little bit of vintage shopping, which I will take you. I couldn't do the whole thing yesterday because I've got my battery packs, but I brought it this time. So I will actually take you on a public shopping trip. I have to say though, I went a little bit crazy at Uniqlo. Like, look at these pants, look at these jeans. Tell me these are not the cutest jeans ever. You'd be lying. I was so tired. We walked around, I'm not even kidding, like non-stop. Pretty much most of Shibuya. So that was like really crazy, exhausting. I'm thinking about getting a couple more things and just treat myself. Yeah. As though she never treats herself. Um, I also didn't realize there was a Charles and Keith store in Japan. I went freaking crazy. I bought this cutest bag and a really, really cute pair of really comfy loafers. The leather was really nice. So cute. Oh. Okay, shall we go? Let's do it. Yay! Okay, I need coffee and breakfast. Oh. Wanna do the whole strip? Okay. Oh, we We're gonna head to Shibuya today and I really, really, really wanna eat seafood. I don't even care if it's just for breakfast. Obviously, I had to stop by the convenience stores. My new hyperfixation on magazines is like absolutely unhinged. Like, I can't even tell you. I ended up going and checking out every single 7 Eleven or Lauren stores. It's becoming a bit of a problem. This right here is sort of where the hotel is located. Um, the location was just really, really great. Seriously, I loved it. This station is my favorite. We went to Shibuya Scramble. It's peak Tokyo. Sorry, the camera skills are really lacking, but anyway, we made our way to this very, very random sushi joint. I think I we kind of got lost, but it's okay. We did eventually find the restaurant. Again, I'm so sorry, I don't remember this restaurant, but it was just like a carousel sushi joint. It was my first time at a place like this and they even had tea that was on tap. Like how freaking cool is that? Anyway, I quite frankly ate my body weight in seafood. It was fantastic. And for how much we paid, there was no way I'd be paying the same price if it was in Australia. <sighs> I mean, like eating seafood in Japan, like I wish I ate seafood every day. Everything was amazing and I literally could not get enough. Sorry, I don't know why this footage was upside down, but it is what it is. Eventually we went to Uniqlo. I think this was like our second or third time at a different Uniqlo, but we went there all the time. My partner loves that place. This particular collection I loved. I think I bought every piece from this collection. It was really nice. After that, I ended up going to Shibuya 109. The shopping here was absolutely insane and I spent pretty much half the day here. I finally ended up going to a cafe opposite Shibuya 109 because you can see it over there in that corner. But my feet were killing me. Anyway, the view was nice, the coffee was pretty good and I chilled for a little bit. Then my partner and I went back to his old neighborhood and to his old ramen haunt. Books and chefs were so lovely. They remembered him and they gave us so much food. The ramen was also really, really nice. Kind of gave me 
I don't know, like it was just very flavoursome. Like it was a very different type of ramen than I've had before. And it was just nice to see my partner. He was like having a very nostalgic throwback period here. Now I'm trying to navigate on my own. I think I need to go on platform three, Meguro, Meguro line. <sighs> okay, my partner went off to like play table tennis with his friends. How cool it looks though. And I will journey back to our new area. I didn't really show the hotel transfer. I really like this new hotel as well. The rooms are a lot smaller. Uh, it's really close, like it's in like a really, really cool area. Takashi Shinza. Takashi Shinza. Which is like a super long strip of shopping. Which is so cool because on top of that, tomorrow for the next two nights, I'll be venturing off to do side quests on my own. I'm excited about Traveling alone really does make me nostalgic. I remember I used to do it so much when I was younger and now I guess I have less of an opportunity to do it. But I am working towards being able to travel full time. Anyway, this is me on my way back to my hotel and sort of exploring the strip at night time. There were still a lot of things that were open so that was really cool. This was the APA hotel that we stayed at. I know it's a chain and there's a lot of APAs around. Anyway, it was so cool. It was just such a perfect little night to go exploring. Um, everything looked so beautiful. I ended up stumbling across like a magazine store and girl, I'm crazy. Like <laughs> I went so crazy. I bought so many magazines. Like, look at this. This is so freaking cool. We don't have like anything like that in Australia. All the freebies were like 10 out of 10. Okay, my new obsession is that I will go to every Family Mart, convenience store, anime store, whatever, find these magazines and get these cute little like random ass stuff that comes with the magazines. Like it's apparently a really popular thing. Anyway, this is one. I have another couple over there, but dude. Good morning. I am up a little bit early today. Because it's my first day on my own. I was back here a couple of years ago and I was solo traveling and it is still by far one of the best life experiences I've ever had. He's meeting up with a lot of his business partners and friends because he used to live here. Whereas I want to specifically get lost. I think it's going to be so much fun and I'm taking you along with me. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I am gonna go back to Shibuya. So I was there yesterday. I'm gonna ease myself. I do have a little bit nervy energy. So it's not really anxiety, but a little bit of nervy energy because I haven't traveled by myself in a really long time. Of all places to travel by yourself, Japan would 100% should be on that list. 109. I bought so many cute little outfits. So I'm going to go back to Shibuya because I actually want to go to Charles and Keith. Visited one when I was in Shinjuku and girl. I live in Australia so there is no Charles and Keith stores. And then I have a couple of other places that I stole off of TikTok. Stealing people's itineraries. I shouldn't say stealing. Like people share it and I take it. So it's... It's stolen with permission. I want to visit another beam store. I really liked that when I was in Shinjuku. Try not to let capitalism win, but I'm on holidays. Ooh, that win. Ooh, ooh that win a little bit. Ah. Ooh, it's really cold. Yeah, I will eat anything. No. No more. And it's hot as well. I feel like Japan's the only place that I can like, openly feel myself without people, I don't know, like harassing me or something. So everyone's like so I really do try my best not to like feel anyone's faces. Like I'll blur in post production. Alright, let's go. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I did get lost I'm trying to find Hachiko Ye. There is no excuse to not be able to communicate in like the Japanese people with like apps like Google Translate. I remember one time I was like lost, like really really lost in Kyoto and then I think this like older woman 
saw that I was really lost. And then she, back then there was like, Google Crowd like wasn't where it is at right now. She knew I was lost. And she ended up walking me all the way to my destination. Like, I don't know what her plans were that day, but it definitely was not walking like a very lost 23, 24 year old Aussie, but she did it. It was so nice. Everyone just has like insanely, insanely good style. What is in the water? I feel like I have to step up my game. It's like, <laughs> anyway, I really, really want to get coffee. We are not going to that one. I don't even want to, I want to run to that one. I might try to find like a local cafe. Obviously, love Tokyo. Still rated like my top three cities. But Kyoto, Kyoto has my heart, my heart and my soul. Like I would ride for Kyoto. It's a long way to get coffee. I ended up breaking a nail in my glove. Oh, bring my cafe. <laughs> Maybe an ice mocha? I don't know. Yeah, I didn't even realize that like I was pressing down so hard on my finger and now it's like although well, the view is kind of freaking me. I'm too shy, I don't want to bother her. Oh, not bad. I could do a bit with like sugar. One thing I really wish I did was include ready broken in walking shoes. It's like my partner got me these shoes and they're really comfy, but I don't know if it's the amount of walking I'm doing or if these shoes are just not as comfy as they should be. I just wish I'd brought my like one of my OG shoes, you know? I know, I think it's so cool because in Japan, all the, even the Western brands, so it's the styles are so different. What did surprise me is like a lot of things are technically like made in China, but the quality just seems really different. So I guess the QA is just different and things are designed in Japan are just better. I finished my coffee and then go do our shopping. This was a Paco store and I saw a bunch of chopsticks that I really thought about buying, but I didn't get it. It felt a little bit expensive for what it was, but you know, eventually at the end of the trip, I ended up getting a bunch of chopsticks anyway. I also discovered this brand, the editorial. I really loved it. I wish I actually got a bag there. Anyway, my biggest objective was to find a Charles and Keith store and oh my god, I finally found it. But it was a bit of a letdown and I didn't buy anything from the store. I eventually found my way to Kinnick Curry. Um, I've heard about this place quite a lot, but I don't know if it was my thing. Like maybe I had a different expectation for what the like flavor profile would be like. It just it wasn't what I wanted. That's okay though, I was fueled up and ready to check out Luminest. I heard this was going to be like Shibuya 109 on crack and it was. Plus I got lost a lot when I was trying to get around this place. Um, but everyone was so fashionable and I bought so many pieces from here. I also found standard products and that was really cool. And then eventually I made my way to another random sushi joint. Because I was by myself, the waitress sort of put me at the front table facing the chefs and oh my goodness I like ate like crazy I think I spent like nearly $200 here but anyway look at my face like your girl's having a good freaking time ah uh, it's just it's so good like just looking at this vlog makes me so nostalgic I want to go back <laughs> anyway it was so good even for this sushi place where it's not like you know a very expensive place but the produce was incredible like it was just so fresh the next day i ended up going to team labs and oh my god like i'm telling you this was the highlight of my tokyo trip for sure the light projections the lasers the whole exhibition was interactive like look at this it's so beautiful it was 
fantastic. The textures, the colors, the music, it was, I don't know, I can't even put into words, but what an incredible experience. I couldn't recommend it enough. Like I've been here to Japan twice and every single time I've gone to a Team Labs exhibition. This one was fantastic and very, very kid friendly. If you have kids, they even had like a really, really cool mist feature where like the lights were like projected on these like flowing mist thing. It's just so cool. I could have stayed there the entire day. It was so beautiful. And I'm so glad I wore white as well because like the projections were highlighted on my clothes. I would so recommend this experience. At the end of this exhibition, it's like a tea house that you can go to. And I'm not telling you now, it was like the perfect finisher to the whole exhibition. You should really do it, even if tea's not your thing. Tea's not really my thing, but oh my goodness, the table and the dishes were all like mapped out and then the projection laid on top of it. So when you move the cups, the projections followed um, and it was like plants and flowers and it just bloomed right in front of you. It was absolutely insane. It was so freaking cool. It's just so well thought out and like, it was magical it was just so cool definitely my top two or three experiences for tokyo i am so glad we went and like got more matcha desserts as well like after this exhibition but the whole thing from start to finish was just so beautiful also as we were leaving we saw that there were like cherry blossoms which i was so surprised by we went to this restaurant that my partner's friend recommended it was a suka ramen place it's the first time i've ever had it and oh my god it was like one of the best meals i've had in tokyo after that, he also took us to this dessert place. It kind of reminds me of this other dessert place. I think it's in the States where they use like cereal milk to make ice cream. I think it's like a very similar concept. They use cereal and then crush it into the ice cream. It was really good, but I think three was way too much and we probably could have just shared two between the three of us, but it was really nice. It's a cool experience. Um, to be honest, I really wish I ate more desserts overall, but my stomach could not handle it. So, however, I will say, speaking of stomachs not being able to handle it. After this, we eventually split ways and then I went to grab dinner by myself. I went to Coco House, which I went to the last time I was here and it was too spicy. Like it was so, so spicy. This was our last night in Tokyo, so I went to Second Life again. Like the shops closed quite late, so I spent a bit of time here and then had a second dinner. Mind you, from this night onwards, we had a second dinner every single night and I could not recommend it enough. It just meant that we ate a little bit less at each restaurant, but we got to try multiple things at different restaurants. We went to an isekai every single night. It was really, really fun. It was actually such a cute experience. The next day we had uh, breakfast at Macca's. I don't want any judgment. I just wanted to try it out. This was really cool actually. It was like pancakes on like a burger instead of patties. And then I visited Second Life again. I also visited Book Off and all the other vintage stores around there, but my camera died. So I didn't get any footage, sorry. I did not end up getting these jeans, but I got a suit for like $10. It was absolutely insane. My next vlog is going to be in Kyoto, so please stay tuned and I'll see you then.